Okay, so this way too, you can see them. Well, you can't when I'm too tall for you to see them and me. So I'll, I'll just kind of scoot down like this. There you go. <laughs> so uh, everyone... they get the best side of you. Yeah, they do. So, and I'm not going to be here very long because I want, I want them to come up and ask you questions because I'm not an, even an animator. So I don't know what you do, but I know you've been at Pixar like forever. And True. you started there like as a production assistant or an intern or something like that, right? Correct. And I think for all these animation students, I think, are any of you not animation students? Few of you. Yeah, there's a few film folks in here too. Okay. Um, uh, then, um, you know, I think for everyone here, like working at Pixar, is every, you know, like even me, like think like, boy, I'd like to work at Pixar. It just sounds like the most <laughs> like, creative and exciting place to work, you know? And so... Um, um, can you just kind of talk about that process of, of your journey there and then maybe follow up with that with how Pete came about because that's a real unique to Pixar sort of uh, sort of thing that you were telling me about and then then I think from there we could just kind of open it up to people and so all right all right and I'm sure. just gonna I'm gonna sit down is that all right okay. yeah. kind of, or, or, or do you need somebody like to focus on to make it like no, this is great because I can at least see faces. It's usually so often you're like talking into uh, literally you don't get to see anybody and you're like, is anyone really listening? I don't think so. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So and you guys can hear me fine. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So interestingly enough, so my background is not in animation. I went to school um, as a major in English and uh, well, that was like my backup major. Um, it was really in um, like performance, performing arts and um, film and dance and theater. Um, and a long way around, I sort of landed in California and um, there was this opening, a friend of mine had an opening for a job at Pixar and I was like, great, what's Pixar? Um, it was literally like, you know, right after Toy Story had come out, not too many, um, months, about maybe five months or so after Toy Story had come out and I, you know, animation had never crossed my mind as, as a career choice, but I got a job. So I got a job as a, a temp job as a production assistant. It was supposed to last three months. Um, and I was actually working in a randomly in a cigar factory, which is a whole nother story. So I quit my job and my mom was like, are you sure you want to quit your job? I was like, mom, I'm going to make this work. Like I can do this. So, um, after three months, they, they kept me on, they hired me full time still as a production assistant. And it was for, um, the toy story CD wrong which probably half of you don't even know what that is. So that's fine. But um, we, uh, so I stayed on and after that project, um, they were like, hey, what do you want to do here? And I, in the meantime, had realized how much my background made sense in terms of animation. It's choreography and timing and acting and staging and, and all of those things. So I was like, I want to be an animator. And Pixar, even to this day, is really actually very open about like, hey, if you can make this work, we'll support you in make in trying. Um, so I shifted into being um, a production assistant in the animation department um, and started just staying late and studying the techniques, animation technique, principles of animation, as well as like the techniques. And we have our own software, so I had to learn that and kind of getting great mentorship on, under some of the animators that who were here. And after a few months, maybe six, I'm not sure how many, um, I put together a reel and I gave it to Pete Doctor and on A Bug's Life um, and they hired me on. And thank God it was like a beta cam because like no one can see that. Um, so there's no possibility anyone can see what's on there. Um, but uh, Pete Doctor then hired me on as the first fix animator on A Bug's Life. And I just sort of worked my way um, through the ranks from there um, and continued to, you know, study and, and practice. But so all of my training, in a sense, is through Pixar, um, which, you know, is really exciting, um, but also like 
it's, it's been something like to have to also make sure you stay aware. And like, I go out and try to, you know, you can be very engrossed in one style of animation then, right? Like, or, um, so it's been something also for me to really continue to grow and explore other types of animation as well. But, um, so that's sort of my backstory in short. And then, um, Pete came about. Does anyone have any questions about that or anything? No, okay, cool. So um, Pete, the film came about because we actually have this amazing opportunity here. It's um, it's a it's called the cooperative. And basically what that means is that if you have an idea for a film and it can be live action, I actually, um, my wife and I directed a live action documentary first about five years ago. Um, and then, we, but if you have an idea for a film, you have to, you know, they have to buy off on it and say, okay, you can make this. Um, and we're not interested in making it. And then you have to do it a hundred percent on your own, but they offer you the facilities, which is amazing. So we can use the technology and the software that is here, but more importantly, the people which is just like, you know, you can't put a price tag on that. So um, all of the work is 100% volunteer, um, but we had had this gem of an idea around this moment, this true story that happened in Pete's life. And as a child, and I started um, writing with Pete, sort of turning it into a screenplay and boarding it. Um, I brought on, you know, the advantage of me having been here so long is that I have a real community of people across departments. So I was able, um, to bring people on to, you know, first start editing, um, the boards and laying it out. Um, and we had to put together our own pipeline. Like one of the biggest things about the film that you saw is that the ink and watercolor look of it is not part of the Pixar wheelhouse at all and we had to completely make up that on our own so we had to be really scrappy um and the look is really one of the things that came together last it took the longest to develop and came together last and down to like the 11th hour I was asking for changes and we were putting in different watercolor backgrounds and smudging things and adding things more water drops and um it's definitely one of those things I wish, you know, you always want a little more, um, but I was really happy where we landed. Um, and especially uh, within the time frame um, that we had to make it. So, um, and it took about a little under two years um, to make, which considering we all work full jobs, um, is not too bad really. Um, and uh and yeah, it was just a really amazing, fun um, project that uh, I have learned a lot from and and had a great time making it. So got to go on the festival circuit and meet people like Dwayne, <laughs> other filmmakers, and Definitely it's been really awesome. amazing. Excellent. So I think right now, I think the best thing is to turn this, uh, just turn it over to people. And so, so, I'm sure you have tons of questions. And if you don't, you should think of them now <laughs> and come down and ask questions. All right. Does that sound fair? Brett? Yeah. The question is, what is, tell me about Brett versus Brooke. Oh, that's a funny story. So um, when I first became the fix um, animator, I was also the fix coordinator. So basically I would go into these reviews and I would take all the notes and then I would come back to my desk and I would do all the notes. Now we have like a whole team of people, right? Um, but this was early days and our, our reviews, all of animation reviews are in a screening room. And so you go into the screening room, it's dark, right? And um, I didn't know John Lasseter. He was directing A Bug's Life and I was obviously very new. I didn't know him. And he um, had gotten my name wrong, basically. He thought I was Brooke. And so in every review, and this was a brand new position, like they'd never, they didn't have a fixed animator. So it was a new concept. And I think everyone was a little like nervous and how is this gonna work? And 
So in every review, he would give a note and then he would call out. And often I was sitting like across the room. He'd be like, Brooke, did you get the note? I'd be like, yes, I, I got the note. And, uh, and this goes on for months. And he's always like, Brooke, did you get the note? And I'm always like, yes, I got the note. And um, I'm thinking someone's got to tell him, right? Like some manager, some someone in leadership is going to tell him, John Lasseter, that this is not my name. But literally like three months go by. And finally, we're in a review and I'm sitting right next to him. And he turns to me, he goes, Brooke, did you get that note? And I go, yes but my name is Brett. And he goes, <laughs> he's like, wait, what? I'm like, my name is Brett. And he's like, why did nobody tell me? <laughs> so they made me even, I have a nameplate. Do I have, oh, I have it right here, here. <laughs> I have this funny nameplate. Look, it's Brett. They made me this nameplate. <laughs> and they, um, and as kind of as a joke on my IMDb, they then I'm listed in the credit, right, as Brett Brooke. And I just have, I've never changed it. I've just, I thought it was funny. And there, it turns out there's another Brett Parker who's a dude on IMDb. And I'm like, yeah, it separates there you go. us. So. There you go. And it's a funny story. So. It is a good story. It is a good story. <laughs> All right. Come on up, people. Just come on. Come on. Who's coming first? Come on up. Oh, yeah, you can ask me anything. Yeah, you can. Maybe you should come up here, though, because you may or may not be on screen. We're going to make them come up so you can see. Okay, them. good, good. You want to you see, look right into their eyes. <laughs> I was wondering how you became a voice actor through Pixar. Like, how was that experience? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, so... Um, all of the... When we're putting up the reels, right? Um, they often they have you usually don't have like you know the story's changing a lot and they don't use the actors who they haven't hired any actors yet so they audition people here like just the us who are here um and originally actually my first voice was on um, monsters inc um, and one of the directors had heard me doing like some silly voice and he was like Andy, you want to like come in and, and do scratch. It's called the scratch dialogue. And so I was like, sure. So um, I did the scratch dialogue and then they kept it in Monsters, Inc. And then you become kind of like a pool of people they know to pull, pull from. And then on, on Incredibles, they had Brad Bird had called me into audition for the voice of Kari, the babysitter. And so I did, and he had me like improv stuff. It was like crazy. And then, um, they did actually audition a whole bunch of like teenagers and decided that my voice sounded more teenagery, I guess. I don't know. They liked it. So they kept it. So that's how that, that kind of came about. Thank you. Yeah. So it seems like the voice acting thing is very much just an extension of working at Pixar. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And it's been really fun because like on Incredibles, I got to animate her also. And so which is just like a, an awesome experience as an animator um, to be able to like embody this character. But it really is like different layers of acting. Right. So whether you're acting with your voice or you're, you know, in, in animation where I feel like we are the actors, um, we're just bringing to life the creatures on the screen instead of on the stage. Hi there. I'm a, a can yeah. adjust. Should I squat? No, you don't see a lot. I'll, I'll right. squat if you don't have to. Okay. Uh, so my question is mostly about how this film being kind of all a volunteer project. And with it taking two years, did your team stay mostly the same the whole time? Or were there was there a lot of influx of people who either got busier and uh, had to drop out or drop out of the project or have to pull new people in. What, what did that look like working with a bunch of people who weren't being paid to be there? Yeah, well, you know, it was, I'd say both the developing the technology and the fact that we were all volunteer were there are two biggest hurdles in making the film. And it's shockingly sort of remained mostly the same group. Um, 
you know, I had riggers and that was like a core team. The core team was always the same, but then I would have someone who could come on for just like a stint and like, say, work on one character and then they would have to leave. And then either other people would pick up the work or I would have to find someone else. And in animation, um, it was very much that way. But most of the people, um, almost everyone really fulfilled their obligation that they had agreed to. And then other animators just were having a great time and then they would pick up work sometimes that some of the animators had to leave and, and weren't able to finish based on schedules or that was the advantage also that my background is animation so I, I picked up a lot of the work as well. Um, I, I picked up a lot of loose ends across the project on on many different levels so yeah. All right, thank you. Sure. Hi. Hello. Maybe tell her your name. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say, tell me your names, you guys. Uh, my name's Ethan. I, I'm from I'm from Bountiful, and uh, so, so I'm a I'm a member of like the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, and I'm, and it's just kind of unfamiliar for me, like breaking into this industry where I see like a lot of other people making their stuff that like reflects their values and cultures like like the lgbtq community and whatnot and and i just what do you do to work with like people of different backgrounds and like values and and like like principles like like how do you get them together to like it's like make you it's like make these different projects even if they don't always agree with what like the kind of story they're trying to tell yeah, I think that's a fantastic question. I feel like um, there's a couple there's a couple things really, and I I think there's probably not one set answer to that. I feel like animation as a medium is an amazing format to tell um, stories that could be tricky to tell otherwise, and can open doors um, so that we can start conversations um, from different communities and different backgrounds. Um, and to tell those stories and kind of um, use animation as a means of doing that, which I think is a really powerful aspect of that medium. And the other thing I feel like is that it's really about the work. And so if people are passionate about the work itself, it's okay if like people don't necessarily have the same um, belief systems and backgrounds and ideology around it, because it's really then about doing the work and being able to me be passionate about the work that you're doing. Yeah, they, I mean that that's what I'd like to accomplish. Like, like do do what I love and not worry about what I'm doing. Like, is uh, like would offend someone else or like like my actions might might not be like like socially acceptable or whatnot. Yeah, I think that when you can really keep it about the work, then it's okay. And it's actually a really, um, it's an amazing way then of bringing people together and kind of, in fact, being able to realize that it's okay, that maybe our differences don't mean, aren't as hard for us to cross and communicate across as, as sometimes we think they are, or maybe the media makes it out to be and that we can all sort of work together and make it about the work. Yeah. Thank you, Brett. Absolutely. I'm, thank I'm you. I really appreciated hearing that. Absolutely. Hello. Hello. So nice I'm, to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Brett. Um, so I'm always very curious about the ins and outs of rendering engines, especially in 3D spaces. And Presto is one of those that I feel like has always been really technically impressive. And you mentioned how uh, Pete was a bit of a more difficult operation because it had more alternative graphics with the ink and watercolor perspective. Can you go more into depth of like the challenges you had with going through that and making it work? Yeah, totally. So um, we we basically had to develop our own pipeline um, and we had to what we we started. It was really fun. My visual effects supervisor and I worked with um, the production designer who is a watercolor painter. And we, we studied watercolor to really kind of figure out how pigment and paint interact with water and paper and what does watercolor mean in the physical form 
And then he went away and started to try to translate what that means digitally, right? And so how then were we going to be able to kind of create that effect in, you know, digitally? Um, uh, and we worked a lot, I mean, in terms of software, we worked a lot in Nuke um, to create that look, um, as well as then on top of that, I think one of the things that really grounds the characters is the uh, water, the ink outline. So the watercolor um, was one look, and then to be able to create the watercolor, the ink outline um, sort of really grounds it in an illustrated look um, that didn't really work as well when you didn't have the ink outline. Um, and so I had another VFX um, and an engineer, they're both engineers who were kind of developing um, those, those looks and those tools. And we also then for the skies, we actually all, we had a bunch of us painting in Procreate. I don't know if you're familiar with that yes. program, but we would do all these washes, these abstract washes. And then my um, lighting, um, designer would bring those in and then light and those in in the scenes um, and so it was a hodgepodge of of um, discovery uh, some of the effects actually the um, we called them like water blobs but if you look like splattering off the trees or how we treated the vegetation and then also the way that the dust um, was created that was all through Houdini and my VFX lead, uh, Haldine Brown, uh, developed that. So it was just a lot of trial and error, actually. I mean, there was a lot of, like the line, we wanted it to be art directable. So really about every frame in this film had line that was either erased or added. Um, even though it was like automated, there was a lot of, of hand designed work that went into that too. Interesting, thank you. Sure. Sharp person, sharp person alert. <laughs> all right. Well, Hi. How's it going? Uh, thank you. First of all, I really appreciate that you took the time to actually answer questions with us. It's honestly an honor to get to just talk to somebody that's already got experience in the field. And uh, I, it's really fun to be here. So it's my, it's my honor. And uh, coming from somebody that just started their animation career, I'm just starting studying. I'd just like to know what's your best advice for us? <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, that's hard, but I would say, um, let's, let me think. Maybe it's maybe a couple things. One, um, be open to uh, constructive criticism. Um, I feel like that is one area every day. It's animation is so hard because you have to put your heart and your soul into it. Um, we then present our work on a big screen and all of your peers are there and the director and all your peers then, you know, pick it apart. Um, and so, but that it's not personal, that, 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 that should always be about the work and how to make it better. And I think the more that we can be open to hearing notes, um, the more we can grow as animators and that it's a real community that you don't have to have all the best ideas yourself. You can be open when we're open, I think to the collaboration of filmmaking and I find animation just gets stronger the more collaborative we are. Um, so, so lean on your community and, and don't take it all on yourself and have thick skin, unfortunately. <laughs> Thank you so much. Of course. I also think just to oh. call it out. Oh no, you can't say. Oh, it. No, go ahead. Go ahead. It's okay. It's okay. Keep on answering. It. Keep on answering. But I was just going to say, I think no, okay. like animation, I feel like at the end of the day, it's like with any art form, it's a number of hours. Like it's just hours at it and you will get better. Right. But everyone's going to have a different path and it's going to take everyone a different amount of time. Um, but it is about hours doing it, like with any craft. I mean, I think it's the same with all art, um, but just to throw that out too. Thank you. <laughs> all right, hello. Hello. Um, my name is Nate. Um, I'm also an intro animator um, here at the program at UVU. 
Um, my question is, is um, for, I know it probably varies in between like movies and TV shows, but when you were in the, the I guess, since you're in the field, um, I guess how big were like your team sizes on like projects and how was that working with like a team? I know you just barely covered with, you know, being open to criticism um, and or critiques more or less. Um, yes, yes, like, yes. Like, that stuff. Um, I guess how, how has that experience been working with them on like uh, a pa either a passion project like this or like a movie like The Incredibles? Yeah, I mean, so team size varies drastically on Pete. We've had, you know, I should know this number off the top of my head, but I feel like we had a, a flux and flow of probably 25-ish animators, um, which is dreamy working with a small team like that. Um, the smallest crew I probably worked with um, in terms of like a Pixar film is about in, in animation only is probably about 55. And more recently that usually is uh, closer to 75 or 80 um, animators. So they, it's a big, we have big teams here, um, especially as we're trying to work through, um, you know, production schedules and things like that. It ranges drastically, but um, it, one of the best things that Pixar did, I, I, I don't know if you guys know this, but, um, when they first started, they're really, we are the first company that kept their animators on. Animation in LA today is still really, you know, it's show to show and your job is show to show. And by keeping everyone here, we were able to really create an environment, again, of collaboration and learning from each other. So it's really a pretty tight knit group. So it's pretty great. Um, and obviously, you know, in a, it, we're huge at this point. We have 150 animators. So you have your friends who are you're more friends with, but as a group, it's a really, it's a really positive experience. So I don't know, did that answer your question? Yeah, like um, also like, I guess, how is the, the workflow been? Cause I've heard it's like, it can get pretty intense as an animator too. I mean, um, the other day when I was animating, I was doing a project and I was like, you know, I don't think I would mind doing this for like seven, eight hours a day, you know? But I've heard it can be up to like 12 to 14 at some points or like sometimes you'll you'll have like red areas where it's like, okay, guys, it's a time crunch. This was due like now. So I, I guess what is what has been your experience with that as well? Like, were you able to adapt to stress over time as a team, like come together and be like, okay, guys, it's crunch time. Let's just go. Um, or I guess like how what has that been like with being in the industry as well? Yeah, you know, it's interesting because every show is going to have a really different feel to it. It's not always going to just be fun. You know, it is yeah. definitely, um, I would say on average, I probably never work less than a 10 to 12 hour day, okay. really. I mean, truth be told, but, um, or very rarely, I would say work less than, a, you know, I try to keep it in the 10 hour range. Um yeah. But in some shows, you're going to, you know, every production, one thing I love about, I'm very production minded now. I've been so long. There's a beginning and an end, you know, and you hope at least there's always going to be a crunch. Uh, you you always kind of hope that the crunch is a sprint and not a marathon. Some yeah. shows it's a marathon. <laughs> yeah, that makes and you, sense. you have to like just hunker in and, you yeah. know, find ways of both um, not exhausting yourself, but also like, you know, getting the energy energy up and knowing that some productions are just a little harder than others. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate sure. it. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Hey Brent, we're aware of your hard out at 430, just so you know. No worries. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's frightening. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Pete was fantastic, by the way. That was that was wonderful. Oh, um, thank you. So you said you had like uh, ten to twelve hour days. What what does a day in the job like? What does that look like? Well, um, it's probably gonna look it's gonna look different. Like whether you're um, an animator or you're a lead animator or like a supervising. So depending on like, but as for the basic animator, honestly, it's like mostly at your desk. Um, I mean, we we always have like a morning review and an afternoon review um, here. 
it's very loose in terms of no one's leaning over your shoulder. As long as you are getting your work done on time, there's and you're you're at the reviews you need to be at. It's very kind of open. Um, so you know we have a gym here and people go work out and you can have lunch and you know so it's like you're here but you're um, and then often you know, it's like great to call on a colleague and get their eyes on your shot when you're like, I can't see what I'm doing anymore. Like, is this good? Is it bad? When you need notes, like, you know, really relying on your colleagues for stuff like that. But it's pretty flexible. I mean, it's really just about kind of working on we in at Pixar, you always get like a chunk of shots at a time. So you're working on a whole beat, which is really nice. Um, you get to kind of, and we animate all the characters in the shot, um, maybe minus like a big crowd scene, but all the hero kind of characters in a shot. So, you know, it's nice because you can kind of jump around from shot to shot if you're working on a string of shots, like as you're getting hard on one shot, maybe you're stuck, you can jump to the next shot and kind of work through that and go back, give yourself that sort of flexibility, but yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, how does that differ um, being like a director? Um, oh, it's, a, it's totally different. <laughs> <laughs> um, for starters, like as an animator, I mean, you're responsible, right, for figuring out your moment. Um, and at different studios, you'll have more leeway than others in terms of that, as long as you're getting the story across. But as a director, you're not in charge of your time at all. You are 100% um, always like, okay, now you're you're directing animation and now you're in a lighting meeting and now you're talking to sets about the backgrounds and now you're talking to story about like a story point and your day is totally scheduled and you are, you know, constantly um, switching. You're switching tasks completely. Um, what you need to do and you're trying to hold the whole story in your head and the you know all of it um, so yeah all right that's pretty impressive <laughs> hey, before you go I'm going to jump in front of these people because I wanted to ask when we spoke you recently you said that you were hoping that Pete brought you opportunities to direct for Pixar is that going to happen how's that working out um, you know, I have no idea if that will, <laughs> if that will happen or not. Um, we are writing a, a feature film currently, um, and we'll see where it where it goes. Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a continuation. It's a it's kind of a, it's a I call it a um, a Forrest Gump style queer coming of age story. Oh. <laughs> All right, so I'm Brianna. Hi, Brianna. Great to talk to you. So in fact, kind of speaking on that and having just watched Pete, it's really moving for me as a queer artist to be able to see like this sort of like gender nonconforming and queer story starting to come to a big screen through a company like Pixar. So I was just kind of wondering how the process of like pitching that sort of story is and what you think the future of that might be. Well, um, so just to be clear, I had to make this story on my own. Um, so it's not, you know, technically- right. And you use Pixar's resources though. Right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, you know, I think the good news is, is that there are areas in the industry now that are really opening up and there have been for a bit, especially in streaming, um, uh, for LGBTQ plus material, and we're seeing more and more of it. Nimona, huge shout out for their Oscar nomination. So that's really exciting. I think that there are more and more doors opening. And um, it's just a matter of finding the places where, um, where they are, you know, uh, showing where they do have LGBTQ content, I think. So, yeah. Um, and pitching is a whole nother thing. And I have to say, I'm not an expert at that. So <laughs> <laughs> It's scary. <laughs> Could I ask also, what was your favorite Pixar movie to work on? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> as an animator, I think Turning Red. Yes, oh. I love Turning Red. <laughs> yeah, it was really fun to work on. And sometimes it's really hard because... 
you know, some films you have a better experience working on than others. It's hard to sort of like separate, like how good is the film versus like your experience on it. But that was a really fun one for me because I love the film and I loved working on it. So, yeah. Thank you. Sure. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering, uh, how do you like stay motivated when you do projects? Because I know that some certain projects take like years and like I think most people would get like burned out from it. Yeah, I don't, um, I think part of it is just being passionate about it, right? Like, so your level of passion. I knew with Pete, like I needed to be, if I wanted it to be completed, that I needed to sort of lead the charge. I knew that like we would only have enough energy and momentum for sort of a set period of time to your point. Like I thought if this were to take five years, I feel like the energy would have dispersed and it would have never happened. So uh, if it's a real passion project for you, I feel like you have to be the motivator behind that. Um, and I find at work actually by doing outside projects, they sort of like feed my passion at work and sometimes my my work here at Pixar feeds passion for outside um, work. So I feel like kind of dabbling in different arts and projects can sort of feed your passion and help inspire you um, when you're getting burned out in, in either area. Okay. Uh, okay. Howdy. Hello. My, name, my name's Cass. Hi, Cass. I just had a question about reference materials that so obviously you use like reference materials from the real um uh, from Pete Pete's real life mm -hmm. uh, I just was wondering the, like how much reference material did you use for this uh short film and also how much does how much more resources do you have um reference material wise at Pixar compared to your own personal works um, and just so I'm, sh I know it's what you you mean, like in terms of reference material. Do you mean in terms of like actual footage we were referring to, or? Okay. <laughs> um, so in general, it's interesting. We we did. It was fun with developing Pete. Like I, you know, the house is actually her house, their house, and the car was their family's car. And I, you know, we modeled it after photos. Um, so we had, you know, tons of reference for for Pete's life. Um, at Pixar, we often, when I'm animating a scene, I often will pull from we do a lot of our own digging and, and we've created a pretty decent library here now, but like sometimes I pull from live action when I'm animating a scene or sometimes it like relates more to a, you know, a Looney Tune scene or something like that has been animated. So it sort of depends on the moment and really about finding like what most supports that moment. Um, and also we do have the storyboards to refer back to. And sometimes those are really rough and, you don't get a lot of information from it, but sometimes there's really some nice nuance in a storyboard um, and the intention of the at, of that moment when that when that story was being developed and it's really clear in the boards. Um, and we also do video. They video all of the actors as they're doing the PDX, which is amazing because you can get a lot of nuanced acting sometimes from that as well. So that's sort of like the range of reference that we have at work. That's really cool. Thank you. Sure. Hi, I have another question. Um, <laughs> my name is Gladys. Hi, Gladys. Hi. So I was kind of wondering what the process was like for, you know, whenever you make any type of film. And well, can, I, can you just sit down? I have a few more. Sorry. Wait, so wait say that again. I'm sorry. I was wondering how the process is for the film. Like, how do you guys work through that? Especially like at, at Pixar? Um, so a director will, they'll, there's sort of like a whole development phase where they're writing, um, and they have, they start to develop the story. And while they're doing that, there'll be a story team that are boarding the, the story and they'll start editing that immediately pretty much and getting that into reels. Um, and that's where the scratch comes in so that they're watching very quickly. It's not just words on the page. It's like watching the reels. 
um, and watching the story and the, the film kind of come together that way. Um, and at the, then at the same time, there's going to be a art director who's going to start, they're going to start doing all of designing all the sets and the look of the film and figuring that out, especially if it's a new film, like a, a, a sequel, obviously will have a little bit more, um, already figured out. And then pretty soon, once they really know that this, the film is going to happen, um, there's a characters team and they start modeling the characters. Um, and then so pretty soon, all of this is kind of this is all called pre-production. It's all kind of happening at the same time. Um, they start what the character designer will have designed the characters. Um, they actually uh, we have a. Um, a sculptor um, here who sculpts the main characters and they scan the 3D sculpt into the computer. And then the riggers take that and modelers take that and they start modeling the character because it won't be perfect. So they do the 3D modeling and then the rigging. And then that's where animation starts to come in. When they're rigging the characters, we start to work with the character team. Um, and, and so we make sure that all of the controls work correctly in the way we want. We start doing animation tests. And then on the, then about then we start moving into production and that's when layout comes in and they start building the shots and setting the cameras. And then it goes to animation and then sim and effects and then lighting and music and composition last. So that's like a very, 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 very fast overview. <laughs> And another question was, how does, do you know how the hiring process works there? Like what you guys exactly look for? Um, you know, uh, they have a really good uh, animation internship program here um, every summer for juniors and seniors in animation um, that you submit a reel to. And it's pretty much the same process if you were wanted a job. If we had, if we were hiring for animators, you would submit a reel and then they would have um, people look at it first, um, you know, in HR, they look at it and they sort of go through and weed through the reels um, and then it, you would come through a, a, an interview process. Thank you. Sure. If we maybe have one time for, time for maybe one more question. Yeah, that sounds great. I'll be super fast. I'm sorry. No worries. I to ask, my name is Aubrey and I just wanted to ask what was like a personal struggle for you learning animation? Um, and being in the industry, and how did you overcome that? Oof. Wow, you might have been fast, but it was a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, maybe that's why I, maybe that's why my advice was thick skin. I think, to be honest, because I didn't come up through animation school, um, I wasn't as accustomed to the daily critique and to that process. Um, so that was something I really had to learn to hear notes as not criticism, but as uh, notes to sort of support what you're doing and how to make it better. Um, so that was a, that's been a shift that I've I've had to, um, to had to make. Yeah. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you. Brett, my colleague, my colleague Rodane here has the last question. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for coming. I just want to know with all the R and D that you did on Pete, which is a beautiful film, by the way. Thank you. I, are are you going to be able to use that in the future? I mean, certainly somebody at Pixar has seen that and said, "Wow, this is very cool." So I I love the watercolor look. You know, old time uh, throws throws back to the you know early days of of animated filmmaking so yeah are you going to be able to use it again uh we're hoping to we're hoping to yeah we are um the, it's this i'm on another project right now so it's hard to find the the time to make all to keep everything moving forward but they're the engineer who helped me develop it and myself are really passionate about trying to bring that forward so we're we're putting together pitches and we're trying to um yeah, we're trying to make that happen. If you need us to vote on it, we will. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I would, yeah, it would be fabulous. <laughs> Brett, Brett, it was just so wonderful to see you again, first of all.
I mean, you guys you are too, so, close and close, so close to my heart. And uh, give my love to Pete and uh, can't wait to see you again. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You guys want to give her a big round of applause? And... No, well, thank you so much. It was great getting all your questions and good luck with everything. Dwayne, we'll talk to you. Best. Hey, guys. Cool, huh? Yes. Yeah.